Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at conditional statements as our second part of our logic unit. Conditional statements are statements that we can write in the form of if then. We have special notation for that, which is P then Q notated here, P arrow Q. For example, the P represents the hypothesis and the Q represents the conclusion. In this example, if an animal meows, then it is a cat. An animal meows is the hypothesis. It is a cat is the conclusion. This is a conditional statement because it is in if-then form. If the weather is nice, then I'll wash the car. Again, the weather is nice. That's our hypothesis represented by the letter P. I'll wash the car is our conclusion, represented by the letter Q. If 2 divides evenly into x, then x is a positive number. P, then Q. Go ahead and pause your video and see if you can come up with your own if-then conditional statements. Sometimes a statement isn't in the form if then, but we can go ahead and put it in that form. So we have the statement, all birds have feathers. We're needing the if and the then. We also need a little bit more about the birds. Um, we have all birds and we have feathers. Those are the two pieces that we need to write in if then form. If we go ahead and look at that, we can change that to if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. So we add, had to add if an animal is a bird to clarify the beginning, then it has feathers. Sometimes uh, in our second example here, we have two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. We already have the word if in our statement. That's the signal that that part of the statement is your hypothesis. So a linear pair is the hypothesis. Supplementary is the conclusion. So when we rewrite this, we have if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. There are forms of conditional statements, and they all start with that original conditional P then Q. So we have a statement here, all birds have feathers. In our last slide, we went ahead and rewrote that as a conditional statement. If an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. We can take its converse, which means we exchange the hypothesis and the conclusion. We flip-flop places. Notice our original notation was P then Q. Now it says Q then P, so we change the order. We can also write something called the inverse, which is when we keep the order, but we negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Our notation looks a little funny. We have these little wiggles in front of P and Q. Those are the tilde symbol, um, and then they mean not P and not Q. We also have something called a contrapositive. This is a pretty intense word. There's a couple of things that are going on. Not only are we switching the order, but we're also negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Sometimes people say this is the converse of the inverse. Note the notation, not Q, then not P. If we were to take if, all anim if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers, and we were to write them in these three forms, converse, inverse, contrapositive, they'd look as such. The converse, if an animal has feathers, then it is a bird. We change the order of our hypothesis and our conclusion. The inverse, we keep the order, but we change it to its opposite. If an animal is not a bird, then it does not have feathers. And our contrapositive, we swap the order from our original statement and we negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. If an animal does not have feathers, then it is not a bird. 
Here's another example. This is from our second one. Two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. We wrote the conditional this way. And then I'd like you to go ahead and try to write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. You can take a look at our converse, inverse, and contrapositive here. If two angles are supplementary, then they are a linear pair. If two angles are not a linear pair, then they are not supplementary. And lastly, if two angles are not supplementary, then they are not a linear pair. I think the notation is very helpful to figure out which way things are supposed to go. Um, we have uh, several more examples, so feel free to pause the video at any time. We have three examples here. We'll start off with all cats are mammals. If we want to go ahead and write our statements. And then we also want to take a look and see if these statements are true or false. If we look at our a conditional statement, if an animal is a cat, then it is a mammal. That statement is true. The converse, if an animal is a mammal, then it is a cat. I want to see if I can come up with any counter examples to prove this true or false. So in this case, I can think of other animals that are mammals that are not cats. So this statement would be false. If I look at our inverse, if an animal is not a cat, then it is not a mammal, is also false. If we go back to our contrapositive, if an animal is not a mammal, then it is not a cat, that is true. Notice that our conditional statement and our contrapositive have the same truth value, and our converse and inverse have the same truth value. You can do the same thing for the next examples. Baseball players are athletes. If a person plays baseball, then they are an athlete. If a person is an athlete, then they play baseball. If a person doesn't play baseball, then they are not an athlete. If a person is not an athlete, then they do not play baseball. Our truth values are the same as um, over here. If a person plays baseball, they're an athlete. If a person is an athlete, then they play baseball. Well, I think there are athletes that play football or soccer. Uh, if a person doesn't play baseball, then they're not an athlete. No, they could play another sport and they're still an athlete, so that's false. And lastly, if a person is not an athlete, then they do not play baseball. If they're not an athlete, they don't play any sports. So that statement is true. Our last example here, all 180 degree angles are straight angles. A straight angle measures 180 degrees and is like this. It makes a straight line versus an angle that might be like this, which would be 90 degrees. This one is a straight angle. So we have our statements here. If an angle is 180 degrees, then it is straight angle. If an angle is a straight angle, then it is 180 degrees. If an angle is not 180 degrees, then it is not a straight angle. If an angle is not a straight angle, then it is not 180 degrees. All of these statements happen to be true, and we'll talk about why that is or what this means in just a moment. You have some more examples, so go ahead and pause your video and see if you can come up with the correct statements as well as their values. I'll show you those as well. Uh, what can we inductively conclude about converse and inverse statements? If we look at our first couple of examples, the converse and the inverse, they had the same truth value. The conditional and the contrapositive had the same truth value. 
These are considered equivalent statements. Equivalent statements have that same truth value. So if I go back to our example over here about the cats, the conditional and the contrapositive had the same truth value. So these statements are actually equivalent. The converse and the inverse had the same truth value as false. These statements are equivalent statements. We also had these examples where everything was true, so it all had the same value or truth value. These are called biconditional statements, and we can rewrite them as if and only if statements. And you'll see in our notes we abbreviate that quite often as IFF, if and only if. The notation is instead of P then Q, it can go either way. So we've got arrows pointing in different directions. An animal meows if and only if it is a cat. This is a considered a biconditional statement. And so as we look back on some of our other examples, a polygon is regular if it is equilateral. We can rewrite this as a polygon is regular if and only if it is equilateral. So that's a biconditional statement. Same as this one with the all 180 degree angles are straight angles. So you'll see that notation with the arrow going in both directions. The last part of our notes are these compound logic statements. There's two different kinds, and these are statements that either use the word and, or they use the word or. If it's a conjunction, we use the word and, and we have a notation that sort of looks like a capital A without the crossbar in the middle. And a disjunction is a statement using or, and that looks like a V. So we have an example here. For P, Joe eats fries, Q, Maria drinks soda. Those are our two statements. We have this notation P and Q. So Joe eats fries and Maria drinks soda. If it's a disjunction, we're going to change this to P or Q. Joe eats fries or Maria drinks soda couple of different key things to note that a conjection is true if and only if both parts are true. So Joe has to eat the fries and Maria has to drink the soda for this statement to be true. In a disjunction, it's false if both parts are false. Okay, because it says or, Joe could eat the fries or Maria could drink the soda and that would be a true statement. But if both pieces are false, then the whole statement is false. If you have an example here to try, um, we go to school on a holiday is A. Statement B is Arbor Day is a holiday. Statement C is we work on Arbor Day. See if you can go ahead and rewrite these statements. First, we'll translate in symbol form. We work on Arbor Day or Arbor Day is a holiday. We work on Arbor Day is statement C or is that V. Arbor Day is a holiday, that's statement B. Number two, Arbor Day is a holiday and we do not work on Arbor Day. So if Arbor Day is a holiday, that's statement B. Then it says and, so we have this shape. And then it says we do not work on Arbor Day. Well, I have a statement up here that says that we do work on Arbor Day, that's C. But if we are not working on Arbor Day, we need to include that tilde, which tells me not C. If we go to school on a holiday and Arbor Day is a holiday, then we work on Arbor Day. So let's take a look at the first part. We go to school on a holiday, that's A, and Arbor Day is a holiday, that's B. So and B. 
That part is the beginning. That's our hypothesis. Then we have the arrow because it is an if-then statement. We work on Arbor Day. That is statement C. So that's like a arrow C. See if you can come up with the remaining statements mean for four, five, and six. Go ahead and pause the video. And take a look at all of our answers. I should note that on number three, because this is a compound statement, meaning we have two conditions within the hypothesis, we should put those in parentheses because that represents the entire hypothesis, and then you have the conclusion. We have lots of vocabulary for this first uh, couple of lessons. We have a lot of notation, so please make note of this. Keep it as a reference sheet to use as you're working on logic.